It is the Pioneer Enlist Executive Plot Tour and Enlist Specialist. Steve Snyder is with us. Uh, we're at our first stop in Middle River, and we've got a, a full week of, of tours. We're going to be traveling along with you. Steve, uh, give us an idea about this Enlist uh, system. What, what are the benefits? Well, there's a lot of things you're looking at when you're trying to control weeds. Uh, some of the keys is you want the ability to control weeds uh, all different sizes. Uh, you may have different uh, weed heights, so you want to look at different tank mix partners. It's also nice to be able to spray it, keep it on target where you want it, so it doesn't trespass on other fields as well. So we got a lot of options, a lot of flexibility with the Enlist system, and we're still spraying Enlist right now. We have until the uh, R3 stage of soybeans to do that, so we got another 10 days to two weeks to, to get some weeds controlled. Nice to have that option, particularly with a, a year like this where some guys have got some kind of uneven fields up there. Yeah, absolutely, you bet. You talked about options. As far as tank mixes, that list is pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, if you look at all the adjuvants, insecticides, fungicides, active ingredient herbicides, we got nearly 2,000 tank mix partners that are approved by the EPA that we can tank mix up. But there's a few key ones that most people will be using. You know, you know, you put a, like a glufosinate type product like Liberty or a glyphosate type product as well. Some layered residuals are some of the most common ones to control the weeds we have up in this part of the world. Got some really cool things in this uh, particular plot. Uh, talk to me about the, uh, the use of water, the amount of water that we use versus nozzles. What's more important? Well, they're both very important. I think one of the things we need to always remember on any herbicide application, whether it's our herbicide or somebody else's, is you want the best coverage you can get. And really good coverage gives you good weed control. So some of the keys there is you want to make sure you use the right nozzle, higher end of the pressure range. And you want to use 15 maybe up to 20 gallons of water depending on your tank mix partner. If you can get good coverage on a tough weed like uh, common ragweed or water hemp or palm ramroth if it ever comes in, it's just you got to get good coverage. You can do that with the right nozzles and the right gallonage water. You're talking about some of those tough weeds and that's what this is all about. Absolutely. I mean, today uh, um, we look at a lot of different weeds out in the field. we got more plots uh, and tours going on the rest of the week in, in, in the North Dakota. So we'll see different weed spectrums in different areas from kochia to, to volunteer canola, you name it, water hemp. We'll, we'll have a lot of different options for those type situations. Steve Schneider will be traveling with him. We're actually going to bring Amy and Kent into the mix here. Thank you for your time, Steve. All right. Thank you very much. And we're going to talk about local crop conditions as we continue, but uh, you mentioned that tour uh, wrapped up in Middle River. We're going to be in Devil's Lake on Tuesday, Festenden on Wednesday, uh, Pingree, North Dakota on Thursday, and then we'll be moving into the Amenia, North Dakota area on Friday. And we've got uh, Kent Rivard from K-Star Ag Services and Amy Broding from South 89 Seed. Uh, just after being on the road for a while, you guys have some Beautiful crops. It looks pretty even at this point. Yeah, all in all, locally here, uh, don't have much to complain about other than the lack of, of uh, subsoil moisture, which I assume is going to start to show its face here later this week with the temperatures. But overall, the corn and beans have held on quite well. Yeah, the stands look really even. Yeah, yeah, for the most part, we did all right. There's some pockets here and there with some une uneven emergence, but for the most part, we've fared pretty well. Amy, uh, obviously we're looking at uh, soybeans here with this uh, Enlist E3 plot. Tell me about some of the other crops in the region. How are we shaping up? Well, guys are just getting started on ryegrass. Um, there's some swathing starting to occur, so that's good. Um, probably about two, three weeks earlier than normal, uh, hence the drought. Um, we look to see what yield reports look like on that. Probably later this week there'll be some combine activity. Um, what else do we got? We got canola that's probably finishing up blooming. Um, corn looks pretty darn good and it's really hanging in there considering the, the lack of moisture. Um, little unevenness due to the early frost that we had, uh, the end of May. Um, and I think that probably wraps it up. Soybeans look r really good and they're hanging on and we are really hoping for some, some type of thunderstorm to come across the geography. Right, right where we're standing here is kind of where Kent and I meet up for geographies. And so this really looks very nice. Um, as you get beyond into both of our geographies, obviously it's, there are much drier locations than here. Obviously we need a rain. Uh, but we've thrown a lot at this crop this year. We have. Um, I kind of stopped counting GDUs because we are no longer staging with GDUs. The, the crop has kind of pulled itself back a little bit because it uh, obviously needs rain to continue. Well, uh, you had a great crowd here today. Looks like a lot of folks getting educated on the Enlist system. Yeah, it was uh, it was good. Good turnout. Uh, 
definitely a good week for it. Most of the spraying's kind of wrapped up for the most part, and harvest hasn't started, so uh, timing was good and good turnout and good information. Absolutely. Appreciate the chance to touch base with Amy and Kent here and Steve as well as we bring you up to date on the Enlist uh, Executive Plot Tour. Again, we've got uh, stops going across North Dakota for the balance of the week. I'm Don Wick on the Red River Farm Network.